It's the one thing that's going to affect us all eventually, sooner or later, and that's the loss of a member of the family. There's legalities, forms to fill out when we're at our most vulnerable. We're here at the Hartlepool Bereavement Service, and I'm talking with the manager, Linda, to find out the scope of their services and how they can help people in the town. Linda, thanks for giving your time today. What does the Hartlepool Bereavement Service do? Yes, well, this was set up, Hartlepool Bereavement Service was set up uh, nine years ago. And uh, people generally think with a bereavement that it's hand-holding and, and it's a natural thing and you go through it, but it isn't. It's much, much more complex than that. People are dying younger every day with families, and a lot of the work is advocacy. So initially, you, 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 you look at someone in a holistic way. So you're dealing with someone that you need psychological support, emotional support, initially, because people are in shock. In one case, I had to bring 40 agencies in, because when you think about it, if you don't support that main member of the family with a bereavement, you know, then if they go down, the full family does. In a situation when, when you're grieving, they need somebody to pull the services together and give that family the support so that they can move on. So you need to move in. It's a crisis situation. Yeah. And you need to give the family as much support as possible. So when you're dealing with a bereavement, everybody's individual in their grief. Linda, uh, what other support groups have you initiated from the Hartlepool Bereavement Service? So we set up um, a social uh, group that meets up on a monthly basis and organise trips and all kinds at one stage. And it meant that people um, moving through the grief could link up with other people in a similar position, a safe environment, and actually made friends. And that's worked very well. And also, what we found through the course of the work, that there's been an increase in the suicide rate. And what we've done is we've set up a, a support group. Suicide, for, right? Yes, for survivors of suicide, because it has such a vast impact on the family. You know, that we've given them a forum to talk about what's happened, how it affects them, how they're dealing with it. And, and I've noted from a lot of clients that have been coming in that the reason for the death has been by suicide. And so that's the reason it was client-led. It's been client-led because we found that that's a need. That's a mm. need that's been expressed. I'm taking the additional stress away from them because the bereavement itself is enough to cope with if they've got the financial stress and other problems, family problems and everything on top, then that's when things can get serious and they, they, can, they can go downhill if really if they don't get the help at that particular time. If people have been recently bereaved, how do they get in touch with you? They just need to pick up the phone. It's a very easy way of uh, accessing an appointment. Uh, you had some lottery funding. Yes. Um, I understand that you're not going to get it and you are appealing for donations for everyone to help support the agency in town. Wh what can people do to help? Yes, I think there's uh, crowdfunding and we've been set up um, on Facebook so anybody could do that or the people who haven't got a computer, they could write a cheque and send it to Hartlepool Bereavement Service. Uh, I mean, how much does it cost to, to run? Now, our agency, say for instance, takes 30000 to run a year. Now, when you take into account that there's myself and 
administration part-time and volunteers um, you know that's a very very small amount considering the fact that I've seen 1,700 people approximately in a period of nine years. Wow. So w when you when you take that and you think about if those families weren't helped, how much it would cost the state uh, to pick up the pieces with a family, really, it's not really a large amount of money. When we were funded by the, the lottery, and, and, you know, there's so many people now applying to the lottery, you know, um, we actually got a report from the lottery to say that our finances were perfectly in order and our outcomes, the amount of people that we'd seen and everything was perfectly in order and congratulated us on the service that we provided. If you're not going to get this lottery funding, how much longer can you last? Well, Hartlepool Borough Councillors um, have kindly given it a significant uh, donation to the agency, which will probably go up to the end of October, um, in the hope that we'll get funding uh, from somewhere else, because they have recognised and they do appreciate the service, so they have given us our support. So uh, with that support, that's the time limit we're talking about. So if you can give any amount of money to keep this Hartlepool Bereavement Service operating, uh, there'll be coming on your screen details, uh, the Facebook and the crowdfunding, uh, anything at all you can do to help. Let's help this charity survive because we all need support, especially when we're at our most vulnerable. So uh, let's dig in and support them. People respond to grief in, in lots of different ways. In what way? Well, some people just bottle it all up and they don't talk about it at all. And then it gets beyond them. And other people, they just go disintegrate, basically, and they just can't cope with anything. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's why this service is so, so essential. Because once you've been here, it, it sort of gives you that different perspective and it helps you to get on and cope with things eventually. You know, it doesn't happen straight away. This is why you need quite a few visits to come and get yourself sorted out. Mm. I would recommend it to all and everyone. Um, my husband passed away in July last year, 2016. Um, and I also lost my sister. Oh, gosh in October of 2016. Dave and I had been married 48 years, been together 51. You can't wipe that away when somebody passes away. Oh. They've given me confidence, they've let me talk, they've let me express myself, um, cry if I needed to, and just here as a prop. I can ring Linda any time if I need to talk to her. And it's just been absolutely amazing. I was worrying in case anything came that I needed to discuss with somebody and Linda said just to come down and she would help me with it. But anything, anything I need, she's there. She's there at the end of the phone. I have no doubts in my mind that if I hadn't have come here, I really don't know what would have happened to me. Everything you need, to get you through the worst part of bereavement. Um, and I now feel um, that I can laugh again. It would be an absolute sin and a shame if we had to lose this. <laughs>